ready for epic metal? Do you like epic metal, cat? Hmm? Oh, sniff the cross. <laughs> Hello, it's unboxing time again. This time again for a compilation album, The Epic Side of Metal Volume 1. Yeah, you know that. It will be released this Friday. Depends on when you watch this video. But it's the 19th of June on, of course, Golden Core Records, a label from Six Music Germany. Yeah, this is, I think, the third compilation now, within a year. Uh, the first one was, damn, this stuff is heavy. The second one was this uh, really cool, neat records compilation called Essential New Wave of British Heavy Metal. And now we have the epic side of metal. And I really see the finished product for the very first time today too, so <laughs> this opening is really an unboxing and not just, not just some bullshit. So, the epic side of metal, what does it mean? It does not mean that there is just epic metal bands on that, but I will come to that later. I just want to show you first uh, the cover. I mean, I will put it here somewhere so you can see it a little better. A cool inlay card. This looks all very good. We have created a nice CD that looks really cool. So here we have uh, two pictures uh, that were once in German, it's Holzschnitte, medieval times when they cut the wood and then printed stuff with that. So that's some of that that was uh, free to use because it's so old, <laughs> it has no owners. And then of course we have a booklet with tons of pages. No, it's not tons, it's uh, 12 pages uh, this time. And uh, yeah, this smells good, looks good. And I think it, it would be the best to talk about the idea behind this product first, uh, because there's two things going on. <laughs> first, uh, I want to talk about epic metal in general. Epic metal uh, is not a style that is played by bands all the time. Okay, Manila Road, <laughs> we all know the band. I should know them too, <laughs> of course. Uh, it's called an epic metal band and uh, Mark Shelton called the band even uh, epic metal. But even there you have songs with only three minutes or so, like Necropolis. It's, for my personal feeling, it not really an epic song, but it is at the same time. <laughs> it's really hard to explain. So we shouldn't talk about Manila Road too much. This is the epicentrum of epic metal along with, uh, yeah, let's say the first three or maybe four albums of Manowar, Early Warlord. Uh, this all could be labeled epic metal because most of the songs and albums or EPs fit to that style, how we, we, we real metal heads see it. Now we've come to the point number two. There's so many bands playing a style, thrash, doom, just traditional heavy metal, whatever, or even just hard rock. But uh, most of these bands have their epic moment. Uh, this means that, uh, yeah, they make an album with their usual style and then there is this one song. It's usually, it's a little longer than the other songs and uh, the structure is a little bit more complicated maybe than the hit single on side A or uh, a speed metal track on side B. And this one is the epic metal song, even the band is not labeled as epic metal at all. This is the, one of the main reasons for this CD, except of that Manila Road is on there, <laughs> uh, yeah, that I wanted to show off with this compilation. Yeah, and uh, number three, of course, uh, I'm always honest, we wanted to do, uh, we talked about a label compilation because we have signed a lot of stuff during the last months. Uh, we have released many reissues, uh, also uh, one new album uh, by an old band, but a new album. Next one will be 
uh, in July. It will be in Malayus uh, from Great Britain. And there's more in the pipeline right now with uh, also new bands. Yeah, and I think we did three or four vinyl, vinyls already. So, and of course, Golden Core also has a past, not just Manila Road, the catalog and the last three studio albums. But yeah, Golden Core started as a label in the 90s and Six Music in 1971. Like my parents, when my parents made me, by the way. <laughs> no, no, my parents made me one year earlier. I'm really sorry. Totally, totally forgot about that. I'm born 71. So my parents worked on me in the seven, in 70. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so um, a label compilation also to show off what we have, what we have to offer on Golden Core and also on Six in general uh, was, uh, was something we talked about. Uh, but then came the idea, when I checked out what did we do in the last month, that most of the albums have their epic track, their epic metal track or even or epic hard rock track. And so... The idea came up to combine all that to the epic side of Heavy Metal Volume 1. And uh, of course it starts with uh, Manila Road. Uh, Six has uh, the full catalogue of the band. Uh, it's not all reissued yet. I think right now next will be Court... No, sorry. Uh, Circus Maximus will be the next one. It's a little bit more work because there will be a DVD with a show from those days uh, included and this so this might still take a while <laughs> and uh, yeah the, uh, so it was it, it made sense to open this CD even with Manila Road and Mark always told me that uh, his favorite album of the 80s was The Deluge it was uh, from the sound and from the songwriting and all of the skills of each uh, of the Musicians uh, showed up on this album really good for the first time and uh, he was just happy about that album even uh, Open the Gates uh, two years and one year before was uh, More successful in the end, but the deluge now is uh, Yeah caught up over the, through the years. I would say and uh, yeah, we took the title track the deluge from that LP as an opener for this CD, so you have that cool intro part and then the song that is divided in several parts and will be really heavy in the middle and then... So it's a typical epic song from Manila Road and I think it's also in honor to Mark Sheldon to fulfill his wish to take one of his... Uh, a song from his favorite Manila Road album, at least from the old days. Yeah, the next one is a band we signed last year. We are working on the reissue since then and it's a lot of work, I can tell you. <laughs> it's uh, unbelievable. Uh, I talk about the US metal band Griffin, you know, both albums Flight of the Griffin and Protectors of the Lair and that's exactly what we will do as a three CD box in uh, August, so it will be both albums in a remastered version, but also, and I can tell you that right now because we progressed uh, with that, a remix of Protectors of the Lair, which I'm working on yeah, nearly every day now since some weeks, and it still is a lot of work to do that and to do this old material justice. Yeah. So we have chosen a, a song, of course, from the first album because uh, this was more easy. Just a remaster for this CD first before we work uh, on the full Golden Core release. And of course, it's the song Flight of the Griffin because it's, yeah, the epic track on this debut album of Griffin. Similar to maybe Poseidon Society on the second album, which was also very epic. Yeah, next one is here. Katizak, a band that you wouldn't expect at all on an epic metal compilation, but also here. After their first EP, they did their full de de debut album, uh, Die Tonight. And there was this one song that stood out as a longer track and uh, as an epic track. And this was, of course, Vultures in the Air. And this is why we have chosen this song. Uh, I, I remember reading back in the days, oh, that sounds like a German version from old Manowar, and so this fits well too. Yeah, 
this was Cuddy Shark. Then we have something special here. We have Wishbone Ash on this CD, which is of course not at all a heavy metal band. But yeah, it's rocking hard for sure. And uh, yeah, this band has influenced so many bands, especially because of their twin guitar solos. Uh, along with Thin Lizzy, they were also a huge influence on the new wave of British heavy metal. I don't think that Steve Harris wants to live without his <laughs> Wishbone Ash albums he has at home. Yeah, and Argus especially uh, was uh, that 70s album of the band. Uh, and uh, one of the songs of it is Warrior. We don't have that version here because uh, Six has uh, some cool later live albums from Wishbone Ash with a great sound and with great performance that show that this band still is great these days. And yeah, it's a 2007 live version of Warrior and yeah, everybody who heard it so far loves it and agrees on that it makes sense to be included on this, this CD. Yeah, next band is uh, from the Netherlands, Dark Wizard, one of my favorite Euro metal bands from the 80s. Same here, one EP, then one album and uh, the album Reign of Evil contained uh, an opener on the B-side of the album called Evil Spirits and yeah even when we have we did the reissue of this album this song was mentioned specially in, the very, uh, in a lot of reviews so it makes sense to include this epic thing here yeah it's really an epic song it has a uh, a, a really interesting structure. It's not just one, two, three, and we have a metal song all through. It happens a lot, and yeah, I'm pretty sure everybody will love it. Next one is a uh, new wave of British heavy metal, the band Witchfind. Uh, they're on the first album there was, I think, un, uh, until the age of age already, a long song. I think even that the song Stage Fright, same title from the uh, second album, is epic. Yeah, we just have released uh, the fourth album, uh, Lots of Sin on Golden Core. And yeah, it's a little bit more polished than the other albums because <laughs> simply the production is was maybe more expensive, I guess. And uh, yeah, but the title track, uh, The Lords of Sin, for sure has epic moments. There's even a little orchestra part in the middle of the song. So it's not too un unusual for Witchfind if you know all the back catalog of the band. But one thing is for sure, it fits on this CD here. Yeah, then we have, what do we have here? Tempest. Yeah, again, I'm sorry for promoting this band all the time, but I love them so much. I think, uh, yeah, even I wasn't working for Golden Core, I still I did this uh, anthology, uh, anthology double CD uh, for Golden Core in, I think it was 2016. I just wanted to do that. I just wanted to show the world that Germany had a band that was unique and great. And uh, yeah, cool enough is that they are around still here and there. They played uh, festivals like Up the Hammers and Manila Road Festival. Uh, so, uh, yeah, they are back, maybe not as productive as other bands, but they are back. And yeah, after one EP, a self-released single or 12-inch single, you can call it, 
They appeared on this uh, compilation called German Metal Fighters 2 or 3. I think it was 3 or 2 or something like that. I'm a little confused because I just had a sudden death on Iron Tyrants, the European Blitz. Uh, and this was also 2 or 3. So I'm a little confused. I could grab it here, but I'm too lazy. So, uh, yeah, they uh, were on this compilation. Most bands had two tracks. Uh, Poison S, for example, also released by Golden Core some months ago. Uh, they had two tracks and uh, Tempest were different. They just said, oh no, we bring in our seven something, seven minute something song, uh, Control the World in there instead of two songs. And this is a damn epic song. It uh, has several tempos uh, in itself. It has a melody that won't get out of your mind. And still, this song has some of the naive charm of the new wave of British heavy metal. Uh, even if it's German metal from the northern side of Germany. Hello, by the way. And uh, yeah, this song caught me since I have this compilation LP. And yeah, you will love it. And if not, I don't care. It's just one of the best German metal songs that we ever had. So, yeah, now we go to Berlin uh, and uh, we talk about a band that will be reissued, their only album All or Nothing, plus a lot of bonus stuff in July. Sudden Death. I already had uh, the speed metal song Backstage Queen on the compilation. Damn, this stuff is heavy. But now I have chosen, of course, the long epic Dust in the Wind, which maybe didn't start as, uh, is not starting really epic. In the When you hear it, you would say, okay, maybe it doesn't fit. But then wait until the middle part, until somebody is talking, oh, in the battle, oh, 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 oh. So you have everything. Uh, on here that you need that is needed to be labeled okay this is an epic metal song and it's a strong song it's uh, my favorite song of this band along with uh, another speedy song called killer and since some weeks the demo track sudden death but you will hear that in july okay then we have something uh, yeah it's hard to talk about that because I'm in, I was involved in that. It's my ex band Viren. We did uh, two albums. Uh, started in the I think in the mid 2000s, 2006 or so was the first one called Nwoken. New Wave of German Heavy Metal was the album. And then the second one was, I think, 2008 or so, uh, called Ferrum Gravis, or Ferrum Gravis, it's uh, Latin and not uh, German or English or something. Ferrum Gravis. Yeah, we, we were already not, we were not fighting within the band, but we had a different view already on things. Um, I wanted to remain more in that underground US metal sound that we definitely had on our first album. And parts of the band wanted to go on in a more polished and more planned way. Not that, uh, yeah, oh yeah, let's play stuff like uh, the way I like it, but more, oh yeah, composing and stuff. So in the end, uh, yeah, this was uh, the final album of this band. Uh, we were not really angry with each other, but uh, yeah, but uh, it didn't work anymore. And out of that was uh, Rox Calibur was born. So I'm not unhappy about that, how it went <laughs> in the end. But uh, yeah, the last song on this album was an 11 minute song uh, written by uh, Thilo Feucht, uh, who was the main songwriter in Byron anyway. But uh, this was his song, let's say that way, uh, it was his wish to uh, do the, uh, this long epic uh, without, yeah, let's say, uh, any input by the rest of the band. So we more or less 
yeah, did what he wanted on this song. And uh, of course, I was not too happy when the CD was released for many years, but now when I worked on this city and uh, then I noticed ah, it's really a good song that this guy did back then uh, and yeah we decided to include this song. I remember that many reviews uh, mentioned that song back then as one of the standout tracks so there must be something and of course it's uh, Alex Stahl singing here the guy who with whom I did Rocks Calibur a little later and who is now in Bonfire since several Years. So, yeah, this makes sense too. The next band might be the most unusual, but uh, I can explain it. It's uh, the new wave of British heavy metal band Jaguar. Uh, we all know X Crazy, but there's a life beyond X Crazy. Even if you uh, f uh, switch over the, this famous 7 inch single, it's not that, but it looks like it. <laughs> That's Bitches Sin. It, I just found it behind. Uh, this shelf and it it looks like shit so it just looks cool here um uh yeah the b-side of the x crazy single was uh war machine and this was already uh, epic in the way like yeah let's say remember tomorrow from iron Maiden. you know a slow path and a heavy part slow part heavy part middle part slow part heavy part and uh years later i think 2003 or so uh, they uh, or 2002 even they came back with an album called Run Ragged, uh, which had a yeah a pretty much lo-fi sound. I liked it though. Uh, the songs were great. Uh, it, uh, they had a great new singer back then, and uh, yeah, and there was this one song on it as the crow flies. Over there is a Roman road as straight as it can be. There's a straight line, big any point. And it reminded me of these old tracks like uh, War Machine or uh, or Buster Game from their first LP. So this mellow, heavy, mellow, heavy thing. And in the end, I thought, my God, this song is epic. Even it's just four minutes something. It's an epic song. So you can agree on it or not. I don't care. <laughs> it's to me, it feels epic. And I think uh, if something is epic or not is a very personal view. Anyway, so what do we have next? Yeah, this is uh, another X band of mine. Uh, it's not Sun Darkness. It's the follow up band Economist. Uh, we were active in the first half of the 90s and yeah we did one album we did two but only one was released this was the story of that band that there is something unreleased that was already finished yeah and on this first album in new build ghetto status uh, which we made by ourselves Yeah, and on this album, which we made by ourselves, I think 300 or at least, or maybe 500 copies, then it was uh, licensed by Massacre Records and was available everywhere. Uh, yeah, we did already not thrash metal anymore or speed. It was more influenced by bands like Anna Cruz's, uh, even a little Voivod. With our new guitar player, Roger Dequi, was everything a little more yeah, it got more creative. We, I mean, the 90s, uh, we all tried to be even more creative than necessary. But in case of uh, Economist, I must say, I'm still proud of what we did. It's still in the traditional heavy metal field. And one song was so doomy and epic. And this was uh, already a demo song uh, a few months before called uh, The Night That Lasts a Thousand Years. I think also seven or eight minutes long. And yeah, this is... Uh, Typical Doom song and uh, the singer Axel Schott really fits well with his Aussie voice <laughs> to that. Yeah, and of course in the middle we did some, uh, at least a minute of speed metal or thrash even, before we went back and it's a whole story that it's told. So 
we should call it epic metal and it's a it's not the real closer on the album because there was some seconds left <laughs> so what to do with this seconds you can't fit uh, and find an epic metal song which is only one minute long and then I went back to the deluge from Manila Road there's this yeah synth synthesizer piece called Morbid Tabernacle and I just thought okay why not opening this city with Manila Road and closing it with Manila Road with the epic metal band uh, but I hope uh, even if you don't agree on every song to be epic or because it's really, like I said before, a personal feeling when a song appears epic to you. It, some uh, think that uh, Rhapsody from Italy are epic. This is just uh, plastic bullshit for me. So, or even Blind Guardian and stuff. This is all not the way I see uh, epic metal. Epic metal should be from the really traditional field, also uh, regarding the production without any modern bullshit and uh, then this expanded to something epic like Manila Road did it all these years so uh, I totally forgot how I started that sentence here now but I don't care yeah so yeah now we have this CD and uh, yeah I know what I wanted to say I hope we all can agree that it's a ton of great music on that so yeah, this is will be released uh, this Friday. So you, when you see this video before Friday, this information is still valid for you. If not, this Friday I talk about is the 19th of June. The CD is uh, of course released on Golden Core, a label from Six Music Germany. Yeah, and you can pre-order it. Go to your local store and tell them that you want it in case they don't have it. Uh, yeah, it looks a little weird right now in most of the shops and they just have the big important things and you need to teach them to, to change that again to the really important things like this here. Yeah, so the next unboxing video I think will be, yeah, Malayus. <laughs> in the beginning of July, an album that I absolutely love. Uh, it's uh, with uh, Andrew Colton uh, from Witchwind. He plays uh, on their first album and on several tracks even after that. Uh, yeah, and when he left Witchwind he formed Malayus and now 40 years later we have the debut album. So it's a great mix of a lot of stuff. It for sure. It uh, on top. It's new wave of British heavy metal, but then you have other influence. Ah, I don't want to talk about it right now. I will do that in my next unboxing video because this is already really long. So yeah, have fun with this thing. Give me some feedback once you bought it, and uh, all I can say is this was nearly a video without a cat. That's really weird. <laughs>